So, Dr. Ila Manoj Devia, she is from Mumbai, Maharashtra, and she is also from Kutch, uh, Gujarat. She is a PhD guide to six scholars at the University of Mumbai. Founder director of Animation Foundation for Education, Research, Innovation, and Publication. Trustee of national and international NGOs. She retired from service in April 2021, having completed 39 years of teaching under the service, shouldering responsibilities as in charge principal, accuracy coordinator, head of the department, associate professor, PhD guide in textiles and fashion technology at University of Mumbai. She has been associated with UHV activities in, since July 2020. Currently, she is a potential resource person conducting sessions to in various online and offline uh, FDPs. And she is a volunteer in several projects of the University of Human Values and other activities. So with this brief introduction, I welcome Ila Didi for her sharing in the morning session. Didi, over to you. Namaste, Priya. Namaste, Didi. Uh, namaste to all my co-explorers and I'm thanking each everyone for this opportunity that I got today to present my sharing in front of you all. And as he has already introduced me, uh, Sunil Bhaiya, uh, thank you for that. Uh, myself, uh, Dr. Ila Manoj Bhaiya, who lives in Mumbai, and also I try to spend uh, 25 to 40% of my time uh, in Kutch Gujarat. And I was professionally very active as uh, he mentioned, I won't repeat that. And uh, currently, I'm still associated with some NGOs. So I am engaged in social work. But of course, as compared to before, I have uh, retired from many of them also. And as far as my uh, family is concerned, I have always lived in a joint family in my parental home as, as well as in my in-laws home. I've been very fortunate to have a very supportive family at both ends. Uh, my uh, immediate family is uh, my husband, Manoj, and my two daughters, uh, Parmi and Kushmi. Both of them are married. Uh, both of them are settled in life. Uh, the older one, Parmi, lives in Mumbai and uh, very close to our house. And uh, Kushmi lives in US. Uh, currently, she works there. And uh, both are settled. They have their children and families. So we are we have been connected to Kutch Gujarat uh, as we spend time for the spiritual explorations. And uh, as far as my journey of self, I have always had the quest to know self and work on myself. I was exposed to uh, Jain Darshan from the beginning, and. Uh, Probably the family, uh, my grandparents, parents, in-laws, everyone was uh, uh, spending a lot of uh, their part of their life in spiritual living. And probably that is one of the reasons why it has had an impact on my life also. And I did go to the University of Mumbai to understand that philosophy and to understand philosophy in general, the Indian philosophy and the Western philosophy. and. Uh, that's how it uh, helped me understand myself. However, in uh, 2020 July, I came across the UHV uh, program. And uh, of course, I did it during the lockdown, the COVID period, as one of the many workshops that I did. But this uh, left a lasting impact on me. And uh, I must say that... Uh, it complemented uh, what my understanding of self and the larger order. And uh, that's how I got uh, associated with it for a longer period and I'm still associated. I spend a lot of time uh, understanding the proposals and uh, placing the proposals, exploring them and uh, in different ways and through the different meetings that we attend, through the different volunteering work that I do. And it definitely helps me a lot in my in participation uh, wherever uh, I'm associated with. And uh, 
if I have to move to uh, the second point, uh, sharing the shift uh, in my understanding, uh, the human being. Uh, yeah, the understanding regarding human being as coexistence of self and body is gradually developing uh, through self explorations. I can experience these activities in myself and I can see relationship with so many more uh, people, more units with more clarity. Uh, especially with people who are unknown, whom I meet off, uh, you know, suddenly, or uh, I just meet them for the first time, even for those with whom I may have had conflict, I may have had opposition in the past, I have, you know, I can feel that relationship in most of them now. And I verify them with my natural acceptance and I validate them also experientially. And I am able to see uh, that intention of other is to make themselves and me happy. But I am also able to see that there is lack of competence just as I have so many lack of competences, so much of it. The same way I'm able to see that that is also there in the other. And I do try to evaluate this level of competency within me, within the others. It helps me to become more responsible or to be open to learning from them. And I do interact with them with a feeling of relationship, with affection, because now the entire shift has happened. So irrespective of the level of competency, I'm able to see that. But I'm, I would also like to accept that there are times when, uh, for example, if the other, whoever the other is, has not spoken favorably with me or uh, not spoken well according to my expectation. I do go through the feeling of opposition. I do feel mistrusted. I do feel disrespected initially. This does happen even sometimes now, uh, but it happens for very few moments, maybe sometimes seconds, maybe sometimes minutes, and occasionally maybe it lasts for a few hours. Very soon I'm able to identify and see my sanskar. My sanskar, which is led by preconditioning, sensation, it is externally driven sometimes. So I'm able to refer to my natural acceptance and I immediately ask myself, uh, what do you want? Do you want to be in relation with this person or do you want to uh, be in, continue to be in opposition? I also ask myself whether I want mutual harmony in the other and me both. And answers come obvious. I soon replace my feelings of affection for the other. I immediately am able to see it. This, uh, I'm, I can see uh, that this is growing, this feeling of affection for the other is growing. And I can see that there is lack of competence in me many times. And similarly, I'm able to see it in the other also. And if I find it uh, suitable, I do establish in a dialogue of relationship and understanding. And I can Im immediately experience, uh, I get relaxed. I experience uh, that feeling of uh, trust, respect, uh, affection, which gets restored. And I, I do uh, experience the feeling of happiness and I can see it uh, many times in the other also. So I do recognize my, these interactions in my family when I'm interacting with others, wherever I'm uh, engaged in social work even along with the UHV volunteers, the co-explorers. And my natural acceptance uh, guides me towards these uh, feelings towards them. Uh, and I can see it also in my expression. So I do try to ensure these feelings uh, and also that it reaches the other. I can see that self is responsible for the feelings. And this continuous self-evaluation is helping me uh, to refer to my natural acceptance. And I know I have to keep doing this. Uh, time sometimes taken is more, sometimes it is less, but it is, um, it is very important that the program that I set is right, is the correct one. And this is the major shift that I observe in myself. Uh, I do realize that I need to spend more time in strengthening, strengthening the relationship rather than making a program where I used to 
keep doing a lot of work for others and in turn also expect appreciation, respect, trust, and uh, you know, many other feelings, which did not happen most of the time because the program I used to set was not appropriate. So mutual happiness was never possible in the earlier program in which I have spent years of effort and time. And I can see the shift very, very clearly. My focus now is on strengthening relationships and rather than making a program of work, work, and work. So this is one shift that I can see with other uh, self. Uh, with respect to nature, uh, understanding nature as a beautiful expression of coexistence in all the four orders, uh, it throws uh, uh, new uh, dimensions through all the morning sessions and all the a UHV3 content, all the other interactions. And uh, uh, I can see the, I can uh, see the, uh, the innateness, the natural characteristics, uh, the activities of the four orders of nature. And I'm trying to understand them through my, uh, through uh, observations and experiences. Uh, Definitely there's lots to be done here, but uh, I'm able to see that uh, relationship with all the other units. And therefore my thought pattern, my activities, my behavior is also uh, definitely moving more and more in that direction. Uh, with respect to existence, uh, coexistence or submergence of the material and consciousness units in nature and space, which ensure energy, self-organization, and recognition and fulfillment. I can see an experience space. I'm trying to imagine what would the entire existence be like. I'm still imagining that. And as I'm experiencing this self-development, uh, I can see the linear development in the self. And I can see that there is great potential within myself and other self. I have that feeling of satisfaction that I am able to participate uh, in work towards the universal human order. And I can see how it's uh, contributing to my own self-development. With respect to human conduct, uh, our role, our purpose as human being in this existence is to understand coexistence, harmony and relationship and to live in coexistence, harmony, and relationship. So understanding within self and behavior outside, both are important. And human conduct will include uh, from realization within to our behavior, our expression, our work participation in the larger order. So I am trying to uh, understand the higher activities of self and this is possible as I'm referring to my natural acceptance more and more. And this is reflected in my conduct. I feel more lighter. I feel more better. But of course, I'm trying to improve this competency more and more. Uh, if I have to share my, the third point, my understanding, uh, emerging out of exercise one and two. Initially, I found it very difficult to see my imagination. But now uh, I can see it. Feelings, thoughts, expectations. Awareness at every moment by self is not there. But I am aware of my feelings. Uh, whenever uh, my attention is, uh, you know, I put my, I pay my atten I pay attention to it. Uh, what helps me is to be aware of the feelings. Uh, earlier, I used to put a lot of efforts, but now uh, in changing it, but now uh, I understand that uh, it is to be aware every moment, whatever it may be, to be aware. And all the sessions that I attend, you know, as a, uh, a attendee or as a panelist or as a co-explorer in whatever way, whether it's meetings or sessions, Everywhere we are discussing it. So these experiences uh, have really helped me towards my inward journey. Uh, and once I could get an understanding 
I started feeling better because I'm able to evaluate my own thoughts, my own feelings, and I'm able to work on them. Sometimes, of course, it happens with ease, but and sometimes it's with great difficulty. Sometimes it's with guidance. I always refer to co-explorers and I take guidance wherever needed. So reactions therefore have reduced and responses uh, have proportionately uh, increased. But of course, I'm still working on it. And uh, as many of my mentors have said, uh, it'll take time. So I'm not in a hurry, but yes, I do see that shift from external distractions to internal harmony. And this continuous awareness of self only will make it possible is what I realize. I used to sometimes have self-dialogue and very often referred to it to guide me, but never realized that the former, what I was referring to was my natural acceptance, which, is, which has this uh, innate quality and which I can refer to so many times, anytime I want to. And as I'm referring to it, I'm enjoying my journey. I find that strength within. And I find, find life is becoming more simple, more light. So I can see the feelings of harmony and disharmony. Uh, even when I'm, I was so much involved in my social work and professional work and the family, joint family, family responsibilities, household work. Uh, example, I was ignoring my health. I never thought it was so important. But later, referring to my natural acceptance, I realized uh, now that uh, the role of body also for self, uh, and I, sat, I started giving it care and nurturance. I developed the right feelings towards my self and body. I am able to refer to my natural acceptance. And now it is uh, not only as an information, but uh, yeah, I experientially uh, also go through it. I go through the feeling of comfort, discomfort, and so on. And if I'm in a feeling of comfort, I can see that I want to continue. Although I'm not able to always stay in it, I do slip in my imagination. And these are moments when I'm not in my awareness. And then I get unhappy and then I can see the shift again and I can see the effect of it. I can see how it moves towards the discomfort and this, you know, and then finally again, I refer back and I get back, I get more aware and this, these steps continue. And I then continue again with moments of comfort and harmony. And I can see that self decides the feelings that I have for my own and for the others. And I can also see that I can transform these feelings of opposition to feelings of affection. Harmony, whenever I'm aware, I can see that. And I do see sometimes I drift inside along with the, uh, with the negativity, especially when I'm not aware, but uh, now the time taken for my understanding, for my realization of what happened and what should happen is shorter. It used to bother me, but now, uh, now, I, now I'm able to keep cool and able to replace the feelings, the right feelings towards the other, towards the self, uh, trust of trust, respect, affection. And I can see, uh, that I'm responsible for my own feelings and that the others are independent of me and I am independent of them. Although sometimes the situation shows as if everything is connected, there is so much of preconditioning, but now I'm able to see that, that uh, I'm responsible for my own feelings, for my own self. I can uh, also observe how my feelings towards the others were uh, dependent on the other's behavior or words spoken. Uh, just to give a small example here, uh, if my daughter behaves with affection and love, I experience a feeling of comfort and I want to be in it. I want to respond well to her. But if she is not talking politely, then there are differences. If I'm aware of my feelings within, 
I rightly evaluate my feelings. I can observe that there are feelings of opposition right now. My feelings, my behavior is dependent on her behavior towards me. I may react and I can see that my behavior is not naturally acceptable to me. I'm not comfortable. And I want to be out of this situation and feeling. So I again start my journey. I decide to replace my feelings of relatedness, rightly evaluate her, like she may be tired at the end of the day or maybe she's getting late. Maybe she wants to do some studies with the children. Maybe she needs my company to talk to her and whatever are the different options at that moment, uh, depending on the situation, I settle down internally, rightly evaluate self and her. I replace the feeling of relationship with her. And as my feelings for her are restored with feeling of affection, I can observe my feelings and I respond such that there is harmony with each other. I realize that I myself am making decisions about my feelings. No one else is deciding. This awareness is not continuous, but when I'm not aware, I can realize it later, soon, after the, even if the incidence has gone. And uh, I can decide soon that whether I want to be in relationship or opposition. I can see that ripple effect of others' behavior on persons they interact with. I have the choice to keep myself unaware and work like a robot, which I used to do earlier, work-oriented, perfection-oriented, and react, go through moments of discomfort, disharmony with them and with the other, maybe lose the relationship with friend, relative, family, or whether I want to experience continuity and happiness within myself, and other in the family or society. I can see that it is my decision and that I want to continue in it. So I go further to make, uh, to see to it that these feelings are replaced. And I can see that I am associating meanings to everything that is happening outside, whether it is some sensation of reconditioning or right, or uh, whether I'm referring to my natural acceptance. So I'm giving meaning to it. I can see so many of my scars which lead me to make a particular decision at that time for a particular feeling at that time. I can see most of the time that my assumptions, the reactions or response from my side, I can verify them. I can see that these are my decisions. And when I have the feeling of relation with people, with the others, I do not get influenced by it. I respond. I realize that most of my decisions are based on assumptions, preconditioning. So I, I do work uh, to make decisions based on my natural acceptance. And the feeling of harmony, relationship, these are naturally acceptable to me. And I can see that because I'm referring to natural acceptance whenever I'm aware. And I wish to continue this. I did a little backward analysis also of my own self. And I realized that 30 years back, I stopped reading newspapers, uh, you know, the, all the detailed ones. I stopped watching you know, serials and movies and all that. And I analyzed why did I do that? Maybe because there were a lot of negative thoughts that were coming out of it. Maybe it was leading to some kind of source of sensation, which was not acceptable naturally to me. And maybe that's why I did it. So right feelings are acceptable to me. And hence, uh, I have, I've been growing in my feeling of relationships and this begins with trust and uh, moves further. I can see harmony within uh, the rest of nature, which inspires me to interact with it in a way to have mutual prosperity. I have the feeling of prosperity within, within me at most times. And therefore I do not wish to add any of my, to anything to my physical facility. I'm quite satisfied and contented. 
and there are many things that i do to nurture and protect nature but still i need to work on it more and more uh, i do see i i am able to see the difference between uh, self and body and i am able to see the difference between the two i do see the interaction between the two also self and body that the exchange of information that is happening uh, especially when i'm fasting i'm i try to observe it more and i also try to keep myself free from many other activities that i used to earlier do because now i evaluate whether it is uh, leading to uh, self exploration developing right understanding uh, so i select activities based on that and that's how i got more and more involved with voluntary work in uhp because that helps me to uh, develop my own understanding and with that uh, my own behavior so in my interactions uh, uh, with everyone i would say uh, i try to observe all the steps and uh, i am able to give instructions uh, to the body accordingly i definitely am paying more attention to the kind of sensations and to the preconditioning that i am succumb to and i am working on my sanskars and as far as my commitment is concerned uh, i am trying to devote uh, about 4 uh, to 8 hours a day uh, uh, which includes uh, sharing of content as well as uh, all the voluntary work that i am engaged with i'm enjoying it it is my uh, wonderful journey of self where i have met a wonderful co explorers who are helping me in my uh, exploration i can say i have learned not only uh, i am not only developing my self understanding but also learning so many skills and that also is helping me a lot because engaging oneself in different uh, kind of activities it's giving me a platform to uh, experientially also uh, validate all the different proposals so when i retired i remember 3 years back there were so many opportunities and i was thinking at that time i i don't know whether i'm making the right decision by not accepting any but today i feel very uh, satisfied i feel i have made that time for myself and uh, this is helping me in my own self development i'm able to contribute to the family to the society and to the larger order nature and existence and uh, i think this entire journey i wish to continue and it's really wonderful it's giving me a lot of uh, uh, peace within and i'm able to help because i interact with a lot of youth outside through my through the different uh, work that i do through the ngos so i'm able to share proposals even to the youth wherever i'm interacting with uh, with my grandchildren at home with my family my daughters my entire family so i think there is uh, it has an impact on everyone and uh, i'm really grateful to the entire uh, uhv family to all my mentors who have helped me to reach this state and i am very sure that each of you will help me to uh, grow in my journey thank you so much thank you so much ila didi for this sincere and true sharing there are several things to learn from you and i can also connect with um, many things which you have uh, shared today so uh, this is time for uh, the coach for us to ask specific questions to ila didi you can put your appreciation part in the chat box yeah we have a couple of hands raised um my question is specific to the exercises one and two and uh, if if uh, you evaluate yourself that uh, how much you you have 
mastered them or you have achieved them so in that light uh, can you stay it is uh, it is very difficult or easy or how is your experience uh, while doing it how many steps you have uh, really achieved very easily and it takes more time in you know, in the respect of others so if you can put some light on that thank yeah, you so i did try to uh, express through the steps uh, although sometimes i may not have uh, but uh, yes initially i used to find it very difficult i didn't understand uh, you know how to even initially go to my uh, how to uh, focus on the imagination even that i was not able to but gradually with practice this is the sixth uh, seventh session that i am attending the morning sessions and i am connected with all the weekly meetings and everything so having heard you know the other co explorers questions uh, responses it has helped me grow and i'm able to go through all the steps it's not that i'm not able to only thing awareness part i may not be aware every moment but whenever i'm aware i'm able to go through every, all the steps and i'm able to reach to that uh, state of uh, you know i can see that uh, the experience of how the feelings when they are replaced how it is resulting in my own uh, behavior change and when my own behavior is changed and uh, there is a feeling the feeling and behavior is changed and it reaches the other and i'm put efforts to reach it to the other so yeah. i do see that shift now so it is taken time and i'm not saying that i have reached it completely but yeah it is a process uh, it will happen for more uh, more oftener and it will happen for longer as uh, we proceed in this journey but i am able to now understand my sanskars Uh, I'm able to work on those instances, and uh, even I can also see the my mentors whom with whom I'm interacting. They are also able to help me now, because they also have understood, you know, where all I get stuck. So that also helps me a lot. So that way. So fine. I hope I have answered your question. Yes, yes, very nicely. But uh, one thing you say that uh, you share. that uh, how you you are not able to see your imagination but uh, gradually subsequently you you were you were able so what happened in between and what was your experience in that time so can you tell something about that so uh, when i went into uh, for example if i'm not in, if i'm going into disharmony i don't know why this is happening like if i want to give you one small example uh just uh, like we are in a joint family so sometimes i feel i'll end up doing so much work but then there is no appreciation and there is no uh, respect for that sometimes i used to feel that but then i over a period when i you know my attention went to that we have to put efforts in the relationship we have to ensure the other person also about the feelings of affection we have for them so i did try to uh, you know shift my uh, focus more uh, from work and getting that uh, feelings from that work you know getting respect from work it is not going to happen but i have to focus more on the because the self the need of the other self if we understand that uh, what is the need of the self of my and other then we are able to because they require uh, continuity in uh, feelings of affection trust respect and so on so we have to work on that that is what i realize we are, i used to use these proposals share it in the sessions but my attention never went to how to do it but over a period when i'm attending these sessions and when i'm discussing it with the mentors i my attention went to that and i remember one of the morning sessions when uh, Uh, very recently maybe about not even a month three weeks back uh kumar bhi and shamila didi had taken the morning session and this was the topic what to pay attention you know especially with uh, respect to relationship and uh, those words uh, they drew my attention during that time so it is not necessary that it will the words will catch our attention when they are spoken 
sometimes they click us uh, at a particular time which otherwise were also there but uh, my attention never went to it so but at least now it is gone so i'm happy about it so i may be missing many things during the session and that is why i feel i have to attend it again and again because only if i attend it uh, uh, again then only it will help me because sometimes my attention is there on certain uh, proposals sometimes it's going on certain other proposals so i think i just feel that we need to be connected and at what time what will get connected we don't know so whatever is the disharmony that has to get uh, shifted to harmony so yeah. we have to understand where we are getting stuck you know that is the most important yes so yes understanding our own sanskars you know each one of us have come with a different package so we'll have to see what is uh, there in our own self i mean what is it that we have come with oh, thank you didi so much pre conditioning and so much is there no within us that's why yeah. yes uh in your sharing you say that uh you can uh, see that uh, interaction between the body and the self in the fasting time is a uh, little bit good uh, can you say about it a uh, little bit more on that uh, i want to know it didi how it is possible in fasting time it's yeah, good because uh, we are able to uh, when i'm fasting i'm able to see that it is uh, me who's making the decision isn't it it is the self which is uh, making the decision and uh, while the self is making the decision we are able to decide what i want to eat how much i want to eat or i do not want to eat at this time i do not want to eat at this time i want to eat so uh, all these decisions that is being made by the self and the body is following it so that way Uh, even recently when i was unwell uh, i could i could see that uh, that i was unwell and i had to visit the doctors i had to take treatment uh, i had to do a lot of things for the body but i was able to see that i'm still able to work on myself you know with all these proposals i connecting uh, uh, remaining connected with these proposals and that understanding of self and body as two different uh, units coexisting together help me because i was able to see that the self is able to work on it as uh, i was working i didn't need to uh, be affected by what was happening to the body that was a role which was anyways being played by the doctors and you know even i had to do some things but irrespective of that i was able to uh, work on myself i would continue to work on myself because that was a decision that the self had to make and i had the choice that time to get uh, completely you know depressed and get involved with my body but i the self decided no that this is a journey which i have reached here i want to continue with and this is what is helping me and this is what is the my final uh, goal of my own existence and therefore i took a decision on that so i am able to see that that uh, you know the difference the need of the self and body and how it can be fulfilled uh, and so on thank you thank you does this help you didi yeah ma'am yeah yeah didi thank you much to didi ji um i was hearing your sharing and i can see that you know some progress has been made in terms of um seeing the imagination seeing the feeling um trying to change the feeling couple of questions i had and also some suggestions one question i had was whether in the family when you said you sometimes talk to the family members or you put proposals what is their response that was one question and the other question was um any specific changes that 
I know that you may have observed, but has the family mentioned any changes that they have observed in you? That was another question. And um, I was hoping for more depth in the exercises. So I would say if you can work um, on the exercises a little more deeply so that every point, you know, which point you are able to see clearly and it has come in your living and which points you need to work on. That will help you to have clarity, more clarity and also help you in your exploration further. So like when we say, you know, um, we can see many sanskars. So if you can also next time around give examples so that um, you can see how, or it can help others see how things have changed for you, how um, certain sanskars have drawn your attention to some acceptances that you may have and how you're working on them. And as we keep going, there will be more and more layers that we have to uncover. So if we can have more clarity in our expression and our, um, you know, going through the uh, steps, then it will also be useful for others. So those were my suggestions. All the very best of wishes to you for your onward journey also. Thank you. Thank you, Didi. Uh, as far as uh, the first question uh, was regarding the proposals, how do I place it uh, in front of the family members? Uh, and what is their feedback to it? Uh, I would say that uh, earlier, I wouldn't get into a dialogue because I assumed I was always right. So, it was a more like uh, getting angry or instructions or something like that. But now it is not the same. It is never the same. I always get into a dialogue. I explain uh, my perspective and I try to understand the other's perspective. And there is a dialogue which is established and there is, uh, we ease, you know, the entire environment is eased out uh, very fast. So we uh, restore back our, uh, you know, whatever is the conversation, we get back in a very nice way and the feelings are established between the two. So that is one part. Uh, yes, because of all these changes within me, uh, it is seen uh, by the family members and they have uh, responded to uh, this also. Uh, they do say sometimes when I go back to my, uh, old. I'm not saying that this is always happening. It is not that it is never. But uh, sometimes now the uh, situation happens very uh, less. So whenever it happens, uh, they do point out, point it out. But otherwise, they do appreciate uh, the changes that have happened. And this I can, I have got this feedback even from uh, people whom I interact with in the social work that we are engaged in. So that is one thing. And with respect to uh, the shift that I can see as a star, as I said, because the positions that I was holding for many, many years, almost 30 years out of the 40 years of my work, the position that I was holding, I had a lot of stress of work. And I never had time to think so much. It was more work oriented. And uh, therefore, uh, my conversations used to be more work oriented. They were never relation oriented. And I could see that uh, I, I reflected back and I did uh, uh, see that uh, many of these relations were, you know, they were strained or they were not there because of this kind of a approach that I used to have uh, of work and perfection and all these kind of things. My discussions were more, more work oriented. But this shift now, because I have moved away from task and work and all that, and I'm very consciously uh, 
putting attention to relationship even when there is work oriented activity so my focus now is the relationship irrespective whether the work is done not done less done less i can see that the competency of other may not be as much for that work for some things i'm able to see my competency is not as much so i'm able to work uh, both ways i'm able to help the other motivate the other uh, let go many things mm. uh to myself i say this is not important right now it is important that my relationship with that person has to be continuous so my focus has uh, shifted there this is my uh, i think my, the biggest shift that i am able to see is from work orientation to relationship orientation and i can see the results because i am able to see that work is happening now that is the major thing that i am able to see that even when i'm not focusing on work it is not that work is not happening my focus was wrong i used to think that if i have that approach then only work will be done but now because of the relationship i'm able to spend more time on uh, you know recognizing that relation on fulfilling that relationship so i can see that as a major shift and because i was i able to identify my sanskar that was a very strong sanskar within me whether it was in the house whether it was in the ngos whether it was in the workplace and i'm able to see that common uh, approach that i used to have everywhere and that approach is what i have changed and uh, that is what is changing and uh, that is the major shift that i can see actually i had written down everything step by step but i thought you know i crossed time so i skipped lot of thing points and uh, i moved to the conclusion part i'm really sorry about that but i had written all the step by step points ji thank you for your clarifications even so um, i would uh, suggest yeah. that you know yeah. next time around maybe you can have more specific examples more yeah. um, you know um, related yeah. to your day to day living what kind of changes yes, that others basically. are able to see exactly what changes what sanskars you were able to notice those yes, kind baby. of things in a little more detail next time around yes baby so, i will definitely yeah. try to work on this also thank yeah. you so much yeah thank you so thank much you. thank you thank you for your questions it uh, helped me also you know think and explore thank you very thank much you. Uh, आपको मैं खाली दो क्वेश्चंस पूछना चाह रहा था uh, पहला आप कितना क्विक रिस्पॉन्ड करती हो uh, इससे पहले या अभी की बात है और दूसरा ये जो भी देखना देखना हो रहा है वो मेरा समझ के बाहर है आपकी बात नहीं कर रहा हूँ मैं ऐसे ही बात कर रहा हूँ तो आपका ये देखने की बात जो बोलते हो इसको विजुअलाइजेशन या एफोमेशन में डालते हो या किस में डालते हो आप सीधा क्वेश्चन my attention is gone to that i'm just what i'm trying to see is my attention is gone to this now which was earlier not there so i'm able to see it i'm able to uh, feel it i'm able to experience it so is it in the affirmation as if you have to feel it i have to feel it and then you feel it or no, it is no, more no, of no, no, no. visualization as in i would be yeah. feeling some yeah as my attention goes to uh, whatever is the proposal at that time or whatever is the exploration at that time i'm just saying that that is what i'm able to see i'm not putting uh, i don't know about affirmations but uh, i'm well, i'm just saying straight what i'm able to see or what i'm able to relate to thank you the first question is that wherein how quick you would respond to it in the sense because there are a lot of things which have been covered maybe 100000 things how many ever they are but how quick you focus that at that moment and then react to it or respond to it what is the time duration do you pause for a moment or you just quickly react to it so it depends on uh, what it is if i need to respond uh, if i have the time to respond slowly i will respond slowly but sometimes you have to do it uh, immediately then it is that way i mean i'm talking about the life incidences sometimes the life incidences go so fast and you can realize later on you reacted and not responded 
So that also happens. And sometimes you realize that it has gone fast, but you responded. So yes, that awareness is still developing. But depends on the situation, how it, whether you have to respond uh, immediately or you have the time. Yeah, but then do you pause for a moment? Like, let's say you're talking to a family member. Let's say you are in a situation where you have to have to respond kind of a situation. But do you pause yeah, to yeah. say, what am I going to do if, if it affects in the other way around or something happens in that context or you just, because of your preconditioning or sanskars or however you want to term them as, you, you have to respond, so you respond. Sometimes I react, sometimes I respond. Sometimes it is important to pause. I may not have paused also. So both the things are happening and I'm realizing that. So you are you are giving your uh, attention towards that also at times. Yes. If not, yes. if not all. Yes, I am. I am. It is very important what you have asked. It is very important. But how do you do that? That is the only question I have to learn because yes. somebody who has... Uh, analyze this uh, because all the other people are very bold in saying what they are doing but you are at least accepting to a point of working towards it uh, even when most say it but you are upfront about it so I wish to understand where do you pause or how do you pause uh, what are the measures you take to do so because uh, it, it, it certainly helps uh, to you and to the others who are in a, in a stage of that because I am also in a stage of that to be very precise but if I get that hint of doing it, maybe maybe the exercises would help or maybe some point which has been told has been helping or maybe a lot of things are there to help. But at that moment of truth, when it has to be worked upon, if that isn't working, it's not that we haven't understood anything, but maybe we have more things to work upon. Uh, I hope I'm coming clear. Yeah. Uh, see, if our objective is very clear that every thought every feeling uh, is leading to a behavior which is impacting self and other. If we are, if that is understood, then we are careful about everything. So we just take care, that's it. There's no special effort, but uh, we are watchful of our own imagination and behavior. Because we know that it's having an impact. Could you give an example of what you have done? So, uh, and, not, and an example where you haven't done that. Uh, that would be helpful if you don't mind. Uh, like, uh, I, I'm not able to think immediately, but... Uh, now, this is where it happens. Uh, I'm, I'm very sorry. Uh, I'm disturbing everyone here, but... Please understand the situation where being aware of things is one thing and being watchful about what is being aware and, and bringing it to practice is another whole thing a lot. So I'm, I'm just reading through the book also, the UHV2 book. I, I didn't go far because I, I thought of reading it through, but then when I stopped at the preface itself, what is it about? It, it struck me more about what am I doing all this while? So in yeah, that just came. Yeah, I can just think of one example immediately. So, uh, kind of. yeah. So, I'll just try to, I don't know whether I'm, that's the right example, but I'll just still give it. Uh, on Thursday of 22nd uh, July, we were to be in uh, Mukesh Patel uh, Institute for an FDP where I was uh, going as an observer. And already the, the previous observer, or did not get leave and that's how the person had to drop off at the you know just a week before and i made my commitment knowing the situation that right now somebody is required in such a short time and i know everybody is working so in the july of 22nd everybody's busy with admissions and you know so many things so i thought i am uh, retired i can spare those three days and it'll help my own self-development and that's why i agreed but also what happened was on 21st, my health gave way. And I didn't know what was happening. This happened exactly on the previous day. So I had to make a decision what to do. It was a big decision for me to make, but I made it very simply. I just took my decision that whatever has happened has happened externally to my body. 
and nothing has happened to myself myself is in place and therefore if i keep away from the fdp i will be at a loss and everybody will be you know affected by it so i took a decision in the night till full day i was uh, debating and also working with the doctors and all that but i took a decision at night that i will not uh, give up i will i will go for it so on the discussion uh, with uh, the team members permission i went uh, late i reached late with all their support and cooperation but i reached for it so i don't know whether that decision was right was not right but there were a lot of things that were there in my uh, in my uh, thought processes that was going on a lot of people that i kept in mind lot of things that i kept in mind and i took time that entire day to make a decision and i knew that at the end of the day what would my decision be but i still wanted to think and put a proper thought to it and uh, i had a discussion with my team members and that's how i was able to uh, reach there i was able to uh, you know be there and i do not regret that decision at all uh maybe if i did not go probably i would have regretted but i think today i'm able to speak here i'm able to share maybe that did played a big role in my life